email, uh, phones, all of that stuff, and everybody's cool. World is, is, is turning still. Okay. One thing I wanted to point out is over here is our data request line, the total number, 720-962-3870. So Denver, I didn't give you this little background, but Denver is now handling Texas, the Dallas region. We have reorganized from 12 regions to six, which mean, meant for Texas, which used to be handled under the De Dallas region, is now handled under Denver, amongst other states. So that's why this number is a 720 number, but it's 720-962-3870. And it is a service to you. It's our data inquiry line. So whoever answers that phone, if you're, say, working on a project, on your health assessment, on a grant, whatever, and you said, you know, I remember that we geocoded an address, but I've been looking at this fact finder and I can't find it. Or I, I got there and I, I can't go further. Then we'll unstuck you. And we'll say, okay, let's, let's follow along and let's go where, where you want to. So that's a good use of that service, okay? And then Celia's gonna talk to you about some local services available here. Okay, are we ready to go for American Community Survey? Yay, yes we are. Okay, so we're gonna change hats a little bit. We're not looking at uh, simple searches or uh, searches based on 2010. We're looking at another data set. And we're looking at other data products within that data set. So the data set we're looking at is ACS, American Community Survey. Now what is it? Well, in 2000, we did the short form and the long form, okay? And some of you may have gotten the long form in 2000, who knows? Some of you been born in 2000, no, not really. But um, I just said that to wake you up, in case you didn't get any job on the, on the break. But from 2000 to 2010, there was a, uh, a transformation, a change that States were telling the Census Bureau, we can't wait 10 years to get data. It gets updated. Oh my God, you know, our states, our communities are changing. So then the Census Bureau was funded by Congress in 2005 to do uh, the American Community Survey every year. So that long form was changed to the American Community Survey. It became the American Community Survey. So what do we do? We go out and we send a very detailed questionnaire to a, uh, a sample, of a random sample, but it's a systematic sample of households throughout the country of Puerto Rico. And we, if they do not answer by mail, we have a call center in different parts of the United States that follows up with phone calls. They're still ignoring us. Then they get into uh, a follow-up through uh, someone going to your home. So it's a very closely monitored survey. They get a, a, in the 90% response rate. So it's very powerful, which means for you as the, as the data user, as a researcher, grant writer, that you've got this tool of a household survey, because there's really none other like it, okay? And the answers to it, answering the American Community Survey is, is uh, mandated by law, all right? That you as a US citizen must you know, like you must answer the census, you must answer the American Tree Survey. Now, will you go to jail? I'm not sure. I haven't heard of anyone, but it is mandated by law. Okay, so data, and then we're gonna go down to the American Community Survey. So I'm just gonna give you a few orientation points, because they're helpful in, in working through the data. So this is our reference point here, and all you wanna know about American Community Survey, Here's navigation tabs again. Let's click on them about the survey. And here we go. Let's click on, so I, I clicked on about the survey. Let's click on questions on the form and why we ask. Okay, so questions on the form and why we ask. As you can see, and if I can find my little drop down, very detailed, right? We organize them into social, financial, which would be housing, physical housing, and then economic, very important. So you see here that 
as a household survey, we're really asking for a lot of stuff, right? So say, for example, if we're wanting to know anything about veterans, we ask information for veterans. How do we know about um, educational attainment of the population, undergraduate field of degree? We ask a lot of things uh, as far as income, food stamps benefit, on physical, so um, people in, in housing like that, what, what's, how much do they pay for rent? Because then you will under, you'll see how it translates into the data. So for example, if I'm wanting to learn about veteran status, which I remember I was working with Webb County from Laredo, and Webb County was working on a grant for veterans. So they might want to know, well, what kind of questions do you ask to ascertain veteran status? So you can click on mm -hmm. one of the questions, and it'll give you the actual question. So sometimes that's important. For example, I was working with the EPA in Denver, and they wanted to know what year was the structure built on an Indian reservation because if they were looking at lead, lead paint on the houses, okay? So before 1950, that's important. And so they wanted to see the clusters of homes in the reservation. So we looked at how the question was asked so that we knew that we could get the data for it. Sometimes you need that, okay? So you can just click on the question and it'll bring you to that. So that's questions and why we ask. So you see it's very detailed. Now then, as you can see also, sometimes people come up to me and they said, do you get crime data? And I said, no. It's a household survey, so that would have to be local, you know, your um, local police department or, or what have you. But uh, we do ask a number of questions, and, and it's classified in different ways and organized in different ways. Guidance to data users. Okay. When to use what, and how is it organized, what do we do? So I clicked on guidance for data users. Everybody there? So these are three tips, and they're, they're well placed. So you know, like yesterday, after talking about this, someone said, well, I can't get numbers. And I said, no, you get numbers like what we just looked at, the 2010 census. That's the numbers count, population estimates. Those are the numbers count. When you want to get household income, if you want to get poverty rates, school enrollment, you go to the American Community Survey. It shows how people live. Now then, all American Community Survey data are estimates. What does that mean? That means that we're pulling from a sample. So if you're pulling from a sample, what happens? You want to make sure that sample looks like the general population. You don't want to say, well, in this community, uh, a high percentage of grandparents are taking care of their children if, you're not, if the numbers you use are not reliable, right? You want to really be, have reliable uh, data, so we publish a margin of error, MOE, very ACS estimate. And I'll talk about that more when we get into the table. And then the third one, the third tip is a good one, it has a lot of information in it. So, ACS collects and releases data by the calendar year for geographic areas that meet specific population thresholds. A lot of data, a lot of information. So, releases data for the calendar year. So, earlier I said that tomorrow, the one-year estimate is going to be updated, September 20th. So, we'll have 2011 one-year estimates. In October, the three-year estimates will be updated. And then in December, the five-year estimates will be updated. So, why is that important to you? You want to have the most current data, okay? And so, and you all work on deadlines. So you need to know when it's when and what data to use because the person asking you for that will know this information. So if you go in October and you're using five-year estimates and but the deadline is October 30th and you're looking at census tracts, then you'll be fine because the Census Bureau hasn't published the update. But if they're asking you for like city data or whatever, which this is available and you didn't know this, then um, luckily it'll be there when you're looking for data. So. You don't have to carry it in your head. So the one-year data, one-year estimates, 
are only for populations of 65,000. So that's what we mean, that we, that we release data and we collect data for population thresholds. So for city of San Antonio, no problem, I can get one year estimates. Can I get them for Trail Hills? Is it 65,000 or over? Hmm? Probably not, pretty small. Uh, populations of 20,000 are three year estimates and populations of almost any size is a five year estimate. So we're gonna do a search with census tracts looking at neighborhoods and so five year estimates would be it. If you're looking at rural areas also we usually use five year estimates because they're smaller populations. So we have, we use as you can see a lot population thresholds like remember what I said in the quick facts you can get quick facts for communities 5,000 above. So we use the population thresholds are important to us as far as what kind of data you can get. It's related, all right? Then at the end, American Community Survey, one, three, and five year estimates are period estimates, which means they represent the characteristics of the population housing over a specific data collection period. So we collect 12 months, 36 months, 60 months. Okay, so if we advertised a lot during Census 2010 about doing a portrait of America, a snapshot. So it's that date, April 1st, 2010, we took a snapshot of who was in America, who was in the United States and Puerto Rico. However, with the American Community Survey, it's a data collection period, it's a video. It's like, you know, my cousin just had a quinceanera in New York, who knew? Uh, and so it was a video of, of her life, of, of uh, Carolina's life. It's a video. It's a time co a data collection period. It's not that snapshot, okay? So it's 12 months, 36 months, and 60 months. It takes a while to get, you know, that, you know, aggregate of data concept together. But just think of it as baskets of data. Now, there's one other thing about that, and that is currency and reliability two other words we love to use. So, when to use one, three year, and five year estimates? I'm just gonna click on it, but I'll, I'll go through it quickly. Currency and reliability. We consider the one year data the most current data. Okay, this is in between, and then the least current but most reliable. Well, okay, but what does that mean? So, for example, if I'm, usually if I'm looking at social data, social characteristics, uh, I had a school from, uh, that was the Montessori school. In Denver had population threshold, 600 and, and more, and um, they wanted a Spanish-speaking Montessori school. For their purposes, they used, uh, they wanted the 60 months of data because they considered it the most reliable. Because uh, we're looking at this, I have this big basket of data, I have the most data to look at, so I want to get the most reliable. So for language spoken at home, which they were looking at, they wanted 60 months of data to look at. However, if I'm looking at medium household income or poverty rates, which is based on financial, I'm gonna look at the more current data, okay? Does that make sense? To look at currency versus reliability. So that's what that means, is we look at the most data, it's most reliable. But I want to look at change year to year, a financial, then if, if the population threshold allows me. Okay, that's the, the clinker, so to speak. Okay, all right. So uh, if you look at a handout that has data products, one thing we always do is we organize our data into tables. All right, so do you see key ACS data products? Oh, I have the handouts here. Actually, I want you to look at two handouts. First, let's look at, it should say key ACS data products, okay? So key ACS data products is an updated uh, chart, so to speak, of the data products that we organize the data. Data profiles, narrative profiles, selected population profiles, ranking tables, subject tables. For today's purposes, we're gonna look at data profiles, a narrative profile that has um, concise non-technical text, 
We'll look at a subject table as well as a detail table. There's other uh, tables there, like quick tables are very popular in uh, 2010 data, but we don't have time to cover all of them, so I'm giving you the highlights, all right? And I'll show you where they're referenced on American Fact Finder. Okay, so let's do our first search with ACS. Any questions so far? Did that help you get some grounding as to what ACS is? Okay, so let's go to data, and we're going where to get to search for data. What's our data tool? American Fact Finder? Is that what was on your mind? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> so American Fact Finder, here we go. So it takes us to this main page, all right? So then I have a little study I put together, a little case dedicated to the United Way. So, uh, Celia, make sure you tell Mary Ellen I dedicated something to the United Way. The United Way right now is going through an Eastside Promise Neighborhood Initiative. And so they have, um, they're looking at different schools within this uh, East, Eastside Promise Neighborhood Initiative. They actually got funding for this. So part of the schools that are involved with that are Tainan Early Childhood Center, Bowden, Bowden. Hmm? Bowden. Bowden, excuse me, Bowden, and Pershing Elementary and Wheatley Middle School. Okay, we're not going to look at all those neighborhoods, but they're, they're closely related. So, say for example, because I'm understanding that you all still look at small areas, you look at neighborhoods and uh, service areas, correct? Okay, so we'll do this exercise. So, first of all, Let's look at the neighborhood. You know, we're first starting this East Side Promise neighborhood. We've got this grant. We want to understand what's happening with the neighborhood around this Tynan, is that correct? Tynan Early Childhood Co uh, Community Center or Childhood Center. Okay. So then let's go to Maine. And let's do an address search. Oh, wait a minute. Before we do that, let's first look at the narrative profile. I always get right into the address search. Let me first show you narrative profile before we go, get down lower. Okay, sorry, er, back up. So let's look at a narrative profile. We'll, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Let's look at a narrative profile because this is very important when you're writing a grant. And I think you're really going to enjoy this product. It's, it's really a, um, a popular one among grant writers. So we're going to look at our filters. We're first going to go to geographies to filter San Antonio City. This particular product, the narrative profile, is only available for populations 20,000 and above. Okay, so click on geographies, and then you know the drill. You can go through name and put San Antonio City. You can also look at Bear Town if you want to, if you prefer that. I'm going to look at San Antonio City, and we hit go, and then it filters down, and we're in San Antonio City, and we add it to our selection, yay, okay? So that's the way your screen should look. Good? Is everybody good? Okay. I like that you guys nod, because then it tells me that you're there. It really helps me. Okay, so then I'm going to close it because I have it in my selection. Then I have to, because I want to get to the narrative profile and I don't want to look through all of this, I go to topics. And I want to show you this. So see, later on we'll see uh, people. We're going to look at that. So these are actually other filters. Okay. Product type. And this is another way you can filter, and then data set. And you can always, if you know you're just going to look at five-year estimates, you can always just put that up there and it'll just bring you to five-year estimates, okay, and what's available there. In our case, we're going to look at a product type. So do you see where all those products are that are on that sheet? And it explains what these are. In this case, we're going to look at narrative profile as product type, okay? So click on it. 
and boom, it goes up there. So you should have on your screen narrative profile. Then you just select it there. It'll take it away from here, and then you just close it. Good. Okay. So let's pick the first one. I know that for San Antonio, there's one and three year estimates available, but I just want the one year because I'm going to look at uh, the most current data for poverty and for income, and then we view it. Are we there? Can we view it? Okay. So take a little bit to, to load. And yours might be faster than mine. Or is it? Well, she's got an apple back there, so she's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> you got an error? Did everybody get an error? You didn't? You got it? You got it? I was afraid of that because I remember this happened because it, it's, it's um, I think it's Java. I don't have it li uh, loaded on there. Who doesn't have it? You don't have it, and who else? Carol, do you? But I'm, I'm way back. You're way back. But well, the only problem is that okay. no. Uh, I'll help you get there. Yeah. Do you mind looking at theirs? Because it, it's what's loaded on the computer. What's what's wrong? My question: is, I have the selection still saved. Uh huh. Uh huh. You can, you can. So that's when I got lost. Oh, okay. Well, let me help you. Let me, hopefully you'll get yours. And then what I want you to do, for those of you who have it or are sharing it, just look through it and see the quality of data that you get. And then I'll go over the tables with you vicariously. How's that? Okay, so where were you? So if you were, oh, you're already there? Well, I had San Antonio, so I tried to click on it and bring it back up. Okay. But it wouldn't. Let's see. So then, do topics? Yeah, don't sit there. I'll, I'll come and help you. This, you know, I, I don't want anybody. So then, look through uh, product type. Okay, so this is pulling up for San Antonio. Yeah, because remember, you filter. Think about your filtering for that. You're already told fact finder, I want to look at Texas and I want to look at El Paso. Okay. I, I said I'll tell you. And so it's going to go to the lowest. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. San Antonio, not Texas. Well, it'll, it'll give you both, actually. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then, you. narrative okay. profile. Okay. I'm just wanting to see if it's going to. Okay, then you close that box. And then you do MP1. Check it and view it. And I'm hoping yours works. I'm scared because it's on the same row. But it's JavaScript. So yours is able to, they'll be able to see the narrative profile in yours, so you're good. Yeah, you got it. Yay. Okay, so I'm going to use you if you don't mind. Uh, so do you see the graphics on this, how powerful they are? Mm -hmm. I apologize, but it, it is a uh, JavaScript thing because I'm using Mozilla like you. So what I like about this product is it has non-technical text. In other words, it has the story there for you of what's going on. Uh, the graphics, and you know that if you're looking like, um, unfortunately though, like for the smaller communities, you won't be able to pull this up. Okay, like if you were gonna look at Lackland as the CDP, it won't, because it has to have 20,000 and above. But you can see that's a nice starting point for you. For, and any, in, and again, if you're writing within, if you're serving clients within San Antonio, this is a good starting point. Because what it also has, because I think very powerful is the use of graphics. And the use of, you know, because right there, if you'll go down, it has educational attainment. If you go down, it tells you the percentage of um, a bachelor's degree, uh, people have completed uh, a high school diploma, or have not completed high school diploma. So that tells you something. So walk through each of the segments and see what it will tell you. There's uh, a table on poverty and participation in federal programs. Uh, there's, um, and you'll see there, uh, there's medium household income. So there, it's very rich in data. So I want you to digest that. So an activity in foreign born, and this is based on the American Community Survey. Of us surveying households in the city of San Antonio. And, the, and so it's based on, what did you see? Oh, just the education services and healthcare. So uh -huh. just, just <laughs> I like that you pointed. And remember that in those economic ones, they're not my favorite because 
if well because I also teach an economic course it's um, it's not really considered like we're asking people where do they work remember that that's the case rather than jobs in a community we have another program that does that okay but look down further there is an age distribution chart and there's also uh, like the poverty um, um, program and so then looking at this what my question is for you is is there anything unique or um, what would you pull out of this to talk about uh, San Antonio? Just look at it because I, I, I like people to look at, the, at, at this and kind of digest just to see and think about how am I going to use this? How can I position this? Because it's, it's a great tool because, uh, you know, this is public data. Carol asked me, well, do you buy things? It, but there was another question. But it's public data. The only thing is, at the end of it, remember your citation. It will say U.S. Census Bureau American Community Survey. Okay? And the limitation of this, besides that it's only available at 20,000 and above, is that on that graphic, on any of your graphics, make sure if you're just going to cut and paste, if you're just interested, say, for example, poverty and participation in programs, uh, if you just want that graphic, make sure you type or cut and paste the source. So that you know you have very clearly where you got that chart, and I, I don't know why they didn't put it, because you know I expect people cut and paste all the time. Also with the text, you do that; it's right there written for you. In the city of San Antonio, blah blah, it was a medium household income. Okay, so it, the citation is there, cut and paste at will. Do you like it? Yeah, it's really nice. It, it's such a nice product. Um, and again, this one will be updated tomorrow because it's uh, 2011. This will be updated uh, tomorrow as part of the one-year estimates. Three-year won't be updated until October. So if you see how that affects, so then we'll have the most current one tomorrow. All right, so by Friday, I'll have the 2011 uh, <laughs> narrative profile. Okay? What can you tell me about San Antonio by what you read? Because you guys are going to have to interpret this. What's unique? What's um, or about a population? You guys are studying. So, what are you reading? Twenty percent. Okay, is that significant? See, that goes back to Carol's question. Is that significant? And then what you would do is then compare. It. Maybe you go to Texas. And you might want to look at the United States to see how does San Antonio stand within the national and within the state of Texas. But good, okay? So that's what I'm wanting you to see. Like, if you look at a percentage, it doesn't kind of mean anything until you start comparing, right? So you see, wow, we're really low with whoever. You see a lot of differences when you start comparing parts of the, of the city. You will see differences, I guarantee you. Okay? As in all cities. Oh, I know. Someone brought that up yesterday, and I said, oh, don't tell me. But I'm going to tell you something. Within the state of Texas, that ain't unusual. You know, that really isn't. And in the United States, that's not unusual, because I've seen a lot of these, and I've, I've worked in different states. Um, some are better than others. Uh, Denver has been working for years on that, and it's actually very good. But we have a lot of industry downtown. You all have tourism. Uh, we have industries, uh, a lot of industries, a lot of people work downtown. And so there's the light rail system. And I don't think you guys have a, a rail system, right? Yeah, we have a, a light rail system and all of that. So, you know, you're going to improve that. So what else? One other characteristic that you might write it in about or has surprised you? Okay. Heads of household for the mm -hmm. under the what's their chart? Okay, so you're looking at the chart of poverty and participation in government programs. Okay, and so remember how we said that earlier, that in that particular type of household, female householder family that's head by female householders, what's the percentage of poverty? Thirty-one point seven. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm like, okay, 31%. Okay. <laughs> she was just like, yeah. I know, yeah, okay, Pauline. It's like, oh, it's like oh, the answer is <laughs> fill in the blank. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Some of my head of households, so there is a large population. So I usually grab the participant mm -hmm. statistics mm -hmm. and capture all that information to the area we service. Mm -hmm. And we come every, primarily mm -hmm. in the west and south side, but there's certain zip codes that are still higher than others. Exactly. And then to the San Antonio community, especially if it's in the local area that we're requesting mm -hmm. those funds. So that's kind of how we, so to us, that's still very significant mm -hmm. because of the population. And then you can see also, if you're looking at on the census track level, you can also uh, do a map around that. Okay, it won't be a chart like this, but we do have maps that you can do. Okay? Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Or comments? I like comments too, Carol. On the income? Yes. It looks like uh, Oh, which one are you looking? Uh -huh. What does that look like, Carol? It looks very similar. I mean, I'm not surprised. Is it? That would be no, no. Look no, at that. Me, okay. Tell me why. Because that's a thousand dollars difference between male and female. Yeah. Do you think that's very equal? Well, it's five thousand, and for a year, mm -hmm. the median salary is just five thousand. I mean, that's not showing that. You know, women are making fifteen, and men are making a hundred. Thirty-six to eighty minus thirty-one six thirty-four. That's a difference. 5,000 as far as medium, so in other words. But that's an annual salary, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's. Uh, it's a medium. $500 a month, mm -hmm. which, I mean, that's significant, but I would have expected it to be much, <laughs> much greater than that. Okay, you all can have a, a discussion afterwards to see, to, to say what's significant. But of course, always people, advocates are always trying to make it more equal. No, 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 it's not, no. So read, read it, read it, read what it says. It's for, you know, women who work and males to work. No matter. So these could both be in the same household? Could be. It could be in the same household. It's basically looking at workers. Okay, so I, I liked her expression <laughs> back here. I'm sorry. It's just that she went like, I don't want to gain 5,000 less for doing the same job. <laughs> so <laughs> that was her expression back there. She goes, what does it say? I mean, they're not comparing the same jobs necessarily. But what is it comparing? Read it. It'll, it'll say on there. The median income of households. Okay, so was it says the medium of households was forty three seven fifty eight. Right. Okay, 16% of households in San Antonio had income below 15000 right. a year, and 6% had income over. Mm -hmm. Okay? So then it says, um, medium earnings for full-time year-round workers by sex in San Antonio City. Just full-time year-round workers. So for males, there's a difference, it's 36,280, mm -hmm. medium earnings. For female earnings are 31,634. So it's not really household not incomes, it's earnings. No, it's not saying the same job, but $5,000 difference between what males earn and females earn is Mm -hmm. Got it. I'm not saying mm -hmm. I'm happy with that. <laughs> okay. I'm not surprised that it's not a whole lot. Well, yeah. That's why I, my face was a little bit different because I backed out of this completely and I didn't narrow it down to San Antonio. I was in the country and there is a $10,000 difference. So that yeah. is why I'm like, what? Of course there's no Oh, so you went back to see how national? Yes. Okay. And so I, okay. You know, I wanted to make sure that I knew how to drill down myself and I did Good. Good. Okay. But that's what I want you to, you know, once you get the data, that's what I want you to start thinking about because, and also what we did right there, Carol, was real important because we looked and it did not say, it, and that's so important, and you guys all have to deal with this, with income, earnings, what does that mean and what is it saying? 
You've got to understand that because different grant, uh, what is it, grantors, uh, foundations, agencies ask you for different information. And so there's earnings information, like what we looked at right there. There's medium household income information. There's family income, and sometimes they just want to say families with earnings of 35000 and below. Okay? It's, and you guys know as grant writers that different strokes are different folks, so to speak. So you've got to understand, and you've got to read. What are they saying? Like in this case, what Carol was looking at was earnings. Okay? different from household income because household income you can have the abuelita the grandmother living with you you can have adopted children living with you or whatever hopefully the adopted children earn any money we don't know but you know what i'm saying or they could be retired people or whatever so household income is the whole picture okay family income always is looking at related people okay so but people will ask you different things and especially for grant writers you need to understand the different categories and read what's being asked in the grant and then match it so you can answer that correctly. Okay? Good exercise. How did you guys like the narrative profile? It's a nice one. Yeah, just remember that one of the limitations is that you've got to, whenever you cut and paste, you know, feel free to do that, but just make sure that you know where you cut it from and what your source is. All right? So let's do another search. Now back to our case. So let me, now I have to find my little cosita. Oh, there it is. Yay. Okay. So let's go to Maine because we're going to do an address search. Uh-oh. Um. Okay. I'm not finding my thing. Okay, go to Maine. Yay. <laughs> okay, now I want to just practice this. You could leave San Antonio if you wanted to, but we're practicing clearing all our selections. Because I don't want you to go back and you're starting to work on your grant or whatever and, you, and you're there going, oh, why can't I get this? If some, your selection box will uh, make a difference because it confuses the American fact finder. If you have something else and then you're trying to find another geography, it, it will go back to that, okay? So make sure what's in your selection box is what you want. Let's do an address search. Okay, now we're going back to our case study of Tainan Early Childhood Center and we're going to search for that because we wanted to know the neighborhoods around it. I'm hoping that this will work for me as well as for you all because it didn't do the graphic before. Okay, so then let's do the street address. And then let's put 925 Gulf Street. Okay, city is San Antonio. And then Texas. And if you're not with us, make sure you tell me. There was poor Carol struggling. Da 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 da. Didn't that look sound pitiful? <laughs> <laughs> there was poor Carol struggling. Uh, okay, so then, so what happened? So do you got my address? 925 Gulf Street, San Antonio, Texas. And I hit go, and then it geocodes it. So then am I looking at a neighborhood? So census tracts, we don't necessarily anchor, we do have, like a lot of times people say, well, zip codes. We don't anchor a lot of data on every zip code in a city because they change so much, because they're at the whim of the postmaster, okay? Whereas the census tract, we're right on, on target with it because as uh, communities change census tracts, because it is a local decision, then uh, we change our geography based on local, and, we, and it's a very coordinated effort, okay, where zip codes are not. So here, we have census tract, okay, Bear, it's in Bear County, and then see the Zitka, which is the Zitka means the most common zip code that is in that area, so it's 78202. Okay, 
So the census tract usually is around between 2,000 and 8,000 people. Okay, so we're going to look at the census tract, and it's usually designed around a neighborhood. Okay, and the way we look at geography is census tract, then uh, it's in a county, within a, and then also in a place. So let's look at census tract. In 1306, I can't see. Is it 1306? Yeah, it's census tract uh, 1306. So I selected that. I told Fact Finder I want data for that census tract that is located for Tyne and Early Childhood Center is. Everybody there? Okay, good. Yay, we're nodding. We're awake. Okay, so then let me look over here. Do you see where it says map? Click on map. Okay, so it'll give me a map, a kind of wild map of this location, right? So that's a census tract, that's a neighborhood around uh, the Tynan Early Childhood Center. Okay, do you see that? So it gives you boundaries, and if I was really doing this exercise, I would um, also be looking at the different uh, census tracts around there, okay? So, in this case, let's do this. And they're all kind of around. There's two ways to attack this. We're gonna look at different uh, addresses, okay? Let's look at the address for Bowdoin. So let's go back to address. Because we're looking at, let's look at three of, of the schools. Okay, that's been loaded. Okay. So then I'm going to do, now the second school <coughs> is uh, Bowdoin, which is at 515 Willow. Bless you. Willow. And then hit go. So this, what I'm showing you here is how to find different parts of the, the community. Okay. And so the result. So in census tract 1919, right? Okay. So it added that. So I'm doing one more. Pershing Elementary. And Pershing Elementary, is everybody getting the addresses? I'm not going too fast. Okay, Pershing Elementary is 600 Sandmeyer. Okay? And then we hit go. They'll geocode that. Okay, so then it's in census tract 1307. Who knew? All right, and as a matter of fact, another uh, school in the cluster of uh, Eastside Promise neighborhood is at the same census tract as this one because it's a middle school, and usually middle schools are feeders or elementary schools feed into that. So we're looking at three schools. We're beginning our research, just going out. What's going on with Eastside Promise Neighborhood Initiative? Okay. So let's look at the map and see where are they in the city. You see that? Cool, huh? Another way you could do this is if you were just wanting to look at this here. I don't know if we'll have time to do that. We may not. But if, if I started off with this census tract, I could use this graphic and click on this, click on that, click on that. I would have to have census tract on here, not state, and it would show me the census tracts around there. So that's another way to get data, like this, around a neighborhood. In this particular case, I'm looking at some schools in a cluster uh, for th that the United Way actually is doing. So we're gonna look at three different neighborhoods that are around these schools, okay?
that's, uh, that's part of this uh, Eastside Promise Neighborhood Initiative. Okay, but it doesn't actually put the thing, that you're, the address, the market anyway, like Google Maps does. Okay. You, all you're getting is that census, right? Census tract. So you don't know mm -hmm. No, but you can look at the streets yeah. and stuff like that, so you can kind of do that. So. Oh, I see. I think what you can do, as far as you want to know where the address is, right? But then I think you can uh, point it to with the image. I think you can look at look for the location. But if not, what I would do is do it manually. Okay. So that if you if that's important to you to know that or to kind of figure it. What you can do also is you can look at boundaries um, through here. And you can even put the census tract. If you want to put the numbers of the census tract, you do that by boundaries and features. You see that? And so if you wanted to add, like say for example, um, oh, the census tracts on there. If that would be important, then you could do that. However, I will caution you, when you do that, it kind of makes her busier. And then at the bottom, it says update. So you can add that. Those are the boundaries and features you can add to customize it. Let's look at find a location. But on features, you can go to school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you could do that. Let's do that. Trying to see where it is. The but it has state legislative, Mecca, New England. You have to go to the next tab. So then. Um, yeah. Let's click on that and see if it'll tell us. It's school district, elementary. Let's go to these two and see what happens. So I'm just clicking on school, see what, what it does. I haven't looked at schools at you. And I updated it, okay? Did it do anything? It might just do the boundaries. I'm not seeing that it's doing anything. Uh, yeah, I didn't see where it, uh, where it did anything. Did yours do anything for the schools once you updated it? No, it might have been just that it, it does the boundaries. And we're in the boundaries of you know. Okay, and you may have to play with this to actually see them. It, it should have done something. I don't know. Okay. So anyway, so those are the census tracts that we're looking at. So another thing that I wanted to go back to is now that I know my area, let's go back to address this one time. And I'm going to add, oh, here we go. I want to add Texas and I want to add the city of San Antonio. Okay, so go ahead and click on Texas and click on, because that's my compare to what? I'm looking at census tracts. If I can never find my mouse. Okay, here we go. Here's Texas. Uh oh, what happened? Oh no, some advertisements. I'm an advertisement here. <laughs> Oh my god. Where do I go? Here? Don't tell me it lost my thing. Don't tell me that. Uh oh. I was doing so well. Can I go to history? But it won't get me to my census tracks I know. It's so hard to do. You know how hard it is to do that? Uh, there? No. There's Simba collaboration. Search. Let's do that. Okay. No. Did it lose my stuff? Okay, this is real life frustration. Ah, I found it. Yay. We're happy. Okay, so then I didn't lose my census tract. Okay, so on here you should have census tract 1306, 1307, 1919. And you guys probably have State of Texas and City of San Antonio, correct? I'm hoping, yes? So I'm going to add Texas at least to mine. Let's 
go. But you already got that by just clicking on it, right? Okay. I like that you always are so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that's correct. <laughs> so let me just do this so that I can catch up with you all. And then add. Okay. Yay. So does everybody have the same geography? So what I have here is I selected three neighborhoods in the, on the east side. I want to compare it with Texas, and I want to compare it within the city, okay? But it also gives you an example that you can work all the time with multiple geographies to be comparing. So the first thing I wanted to look at is medium household income. Just want to get a, a, a taste for this neighborhood, what's going on. So one of the ways you can filter and I, I really want you to remember this. Narrow your search. So this narrow your search can work very well for you because it's more an intuitive search. So say, I need to, they're asking me in this grant for medium household income. So that's what I'm going to type. Medium. And hopefully you never have to do it this way. <laughs> Far. medium household income and then I just hit go then what it does it filters through and gives me everything corresponding to medium household income and this is the table I want okay so B19 13 is everybody there if not let me know because I can go help you good oh she's putting on her glasses <laughs> okay good so is everybody there can we, can we look at that table? Okay. So then let's view it. Let's see what's going on. All right. So you can see in the American Community Survey, you can get side-by-side -side geog geography comparisons. All right. So this is a very simple table. Uh, for, so I asked it for a medium household income. And then I put down my different geographies. So I have my three census tracts. Of course, in real life, if I was really working on this, I'd probably want to put all the census tracts of these schools and maybe cluster them to, and decide on how many neighborhoods I wanted to look around there. So for Texas, what's, uh, so what can you tell me about the census tracts that the United Way is going to target? So this is our first blush look. What can you tell me? So this is medium household income, right? And inflation adjusted dollars. So the income is here, these are dollar figures. So that means half of the population is above, half below, right? That's a medium household income. So if you were saying something about this, what would you say? Carol, help me out here. <laughs> Does your screen look like mine? No. Who else does it? Does I mean it almost does, but then my, you know, it has the state of Texas, okay. the census track, and then it would be going out this way. Oh, you must have done all census tracks or something. What does your selection look like? <laughs> oh, my microphone. Uh, you didn't put medium up. You're, you're looking at a subject table. You, you didn't click on B19013. So go back to search. And so, medium. oh, not medium, median, M-E-D-I-A-N, that's what I, and then make sure you turn that off right there, yeah, that right there, no. that one right there, ah. click that out, and then put medium, M-E-D, medium household income, middle. And then uh, click on, it should pull up B19013. Is everybody there? Okay. So, can you read? Trina. Trina? Trina. Trina. 
Trina, Trina, Trina. Oh, like the designer, Trina. Huh? Okay, so what can you tell me? What's going on here? Compared to the state of Texas, compared to the city of San Antonio. How are, th how are these census tracts? What can you give me an idea of? Did you get it, Carol? Yeah. Okay, good. Did everybody hear that? They're significantly lower than the state of Texas or the city of uh, San Antonio. Well, even San Antonio is less than Texas. Right. So within Texas, San Antonio fares less. Okay? Then, when you keep in mind San Antonio and Texas, when we compare these, what do we know? What do we have? So, half of the population of these census tracts that the United Way is targeting lives below 17,795. Okay? So, wow. Yeah. So, right away, you're seeing there's some challenges in these neighborhoods where these schools exist. Correct? Well, we know within the Right. Did I mess up here? Okay. I'm sorry, my microphone. Am I okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Not only am I having challenges here. <laughs> okay. So do you see how that already starts telling you a story? It starts really guiding you through what's going on. What are the challenges? Right now we know incomes medium household incomes can be low, right? Okay, so there's already a red flag coming up for us saying, wow. All right, so then uh, let's go to some more tables. Now I'm gonna look at poverty data on this because that's one of my indicators that I'm looking at for the Eastside Initiative. And I have to find my, my mouse again and I found it, yay. Okay, so then Remember, narrow your search is a good filter. This time, what I'm going to do, I am not messing at all. I'm keeping my geography intact. But I'm going to eliminate this medium household income and cross it out. And now what I'm wanting to look at is I'm going over here with topics. Okay? That's another one of my filters. Topics. Okay? So let's click on that. And see, remember those other filters that it goes on to people housing. In this case, poverty, let's see if poverty is under here. It is. But then what about poverty? Let's look. So perhaps if I was looking at the food lunch program, I may be looking at food stamp snap. Or if I was looking at maybe um, how people live as far as if I'm doing a rehab program, I may be interested in heating and cooling assistance. Or I may be looking at poverty um, as far as children and whatever in, in this uh, initiative. Okay? Just depends how the question and what our funders have asked us to look at and what we're interested in looking at to see how we service that, that na those neighborhoods. Correct? So I first just do something different. Let's look at the food stamp because I found this table really important. Okay? So I'm just going to look at food stamp. Do you see that? And I'm just going to look at one subject table there. Okay. So I'm looking for S2201 right here. So I pre selected this. You would be. Uh, so I'm going to look at, I'm looking at food stamps because I'm also looking at lunch, food lunch programs, okay? So I wanted to see, in fact I heard this this morning on NPR, how much more families are using food stamps because that's an indicator, okay? So click on the subject table 2201, okay? So again you're saying, Pauline, what's the subject table? S2201, S2201, got that Carol? No, they're separate tables because the data products here, we organize the tables differently. Do I look like, like I'm an advertisement here? Uh, that's what it feels like. <laughs> so um, there's different products. So 
So that's what I want you to understand, because that when you look at the tables, they're like can be overwhelmed, like ah. So what I want you to understand, there's diff there's a method to the madness. I believe in there's madness, but uh, like for example, the subject table is what the subject table is similar to data profiles, but they are classified by subject. So in this case, we're going to look at a subject table that is the subject is what food stamps and then characteristics related to it. So let's look at it so you can kind of get the gist of it. All right? So click on that one, just on that one, and then view it. S2201, subject table on food stamps. Because I think subject tables are good for um, grant writers to use because they organize characteristics around a certain subject. For example, there's uh, the subject table related to poverty. There's subject table related to veterans related to children. So it's a nice way to look at it. So look at the table, okay? And it's subject table 2201, food stamps, snap. And then it's only on, so it's state of Texas, that's our benchmark, and then the different census tracts. So then what does the subject table do? It's saying, this is my subject, these are my geographies, and it tells you households with one or more people 60 years and over, and also with children under 18 years who use food stamps. That's how that works, okay? If this was poverty as my subject, it would be, what, how does age influence, so how does having a household with 60 years or over influence having food stamps, okay? And then, how does, uh, how does that relate to poverty status? If I receive food stamps, do I have a higher uh, percentage of being in poverty? So do you see how to read that? So what can you tell me? There's a real market change. That's why I want you to look at table, because this table is kind of dramatic. So when we look at these census tracts, what can you tell me? Someone said, wow. But look at, I just want you to see the difference between the households with one or more people 60 years and over and with children under 18 years. What, it, what can you tell me? And it, it follows the trend of the state of Texas, actually. So you see how it's total and then households receiving food stamps, households not receiving food stamps. What's that? And it's quite significant, right? Look at that. And again, this is isolated to this particular census track. Do you guys agree with what Carol said? Or how would you phrase that? I'm trying to get over. I can't get on my table. Do you guys see the rest of the table, which uh, San Antonio? I'm trying to see all of this so I can move over. There we go. Am I moved over? Yeah, here we go. The other census track. Sorry, I have to like play with it a little bit. Luckily, the, the video isn't following me. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, so do you see that? I don't know. What else did you find? How, how else would you describe this? She's looking real hard at uh, her head. How else would you describe this? Right. So another indicator, right? We saw our first indicator when we looked at medium household income in these neighborhoods. We already saw a red flag. Now we're seeing something else in, in these families. So those with children, which are, you know, basically if we're looking at schools, we're, that's, our, that's our market, so to speak, or that's our clientele. So it, it, it tells us something about that. Okay, so that's a subject table. Let's look at a detailed table, and let's look at uh, a profile so you can see you can appreciate the difference in the different way we organize data so let's use poverty now okay so let's go back to search go back to search if since you guys have a mouse that works and i don't <laughs> so go back to search i don't know if it'll do that i'm scared to do that because it will go 
way back to third. Over here. Yay. Okay, so hit the back to search. Is it always going to put your columns based on uh, how you threw them over into the selections? Or can you have it like Texas San Antonio? When you're, because, you know, it's kind of, mine's coming with the same materials with Texas, then the San Antonio. I think you have to play with it. Uh, you could play with putting, uh, first selecting Texas and San Antonio. Saying that first, and then searching for your, yeah. Oh, good, it went back to search. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going, I don't want to look at food stamps anymore. I want to look at poverty. So that's one thing, a limitation, is that if I leave that food stamps on, when I look at my poverty tables, it won't give me the full enchilada, so to speak. Okay, so then eliminate that so that we have a clean search. I'm going to close it. I'm removing it. I'm going back to topics, okay? Just for grins. So I'm going back to people, and I really want to look at poverty. And I'm going to go look at poverty under poverty. So do you see where it now, uh, we looked at food stamps and we looked at a subject table that the subject was food stamps. So let's click on poverty and it goes up to my selection. Okay. And then we close out our filter because we already filtered, we, we were looking at different uh, tables for poverty. Okay. So I'm going to look at, I want to show you what a DPO3 is demographic profile. Let's go ahead and compare that subject table with this one, 1701. And then I'm going to look at a detailed table. And let's see, I want to look at this. I know which one I want. 1701, and then let's look further. So I'm looking for actually a detailed table. Okay, right here, just by age and uh, sex and age. So you should have three tables checked off. You should have selected economic characteristics. You should have poverty status in the past 12 months. And then, SM, so this is demographic profile, DPO3. So DP, subject table 1701. And then the basic table, 16, oh no, I want it 16, oh, I want 1701, right. 1701, poverty status in the past 12 months by sex by age. So three different tables, three different ways to organize data, okay? So based on this, I'm just showing you three different ways we organize. We already looked at one subject table, so then you just view them. Okay, so then this is the DP3. Now it is a lot of data, DPO3, a lot, a lot of data. So I showed you a simple table, and this is like a lot of information, but it's selected economic characteristics. So it's a profile of these neighborhoods. And this might be a way to start looking at, because they're looking at all these neighborhoods in the cluster, so this might be a good way to just get some handle on what's happening, because it's a summary. It's an overview of what these neighborhoods are based on, because the DP3 is economic, the DP2 is social, which involves school enrollment and uh, educational attainment, and the DP4 demographic profile is focused on housing. So you see how even having a summary could really help you look thoroughly at these neighborhoods just by these three different profiles, okay? So then you have, so all of these go through community to work and industry, class of worker, because again, it's everything related to economic. 
But then it starts giving you what I like about these tables, and I, and I recommend not getting overwhelmed by them, but kind of seeing how they could work for you, is that it first, it starts going through income, and it starts going through total households, okay? So it's here. The income and benefits, uh, ah, so why does it look different? Well, because I think it filled my geography. Yours probably looks different than mine because for some reason I have the United States on here. Uh-oh. Yes. Okay. Well, keep on with those tables. Mine just lost all my geography. Oh, well. So, but do you, you guys still have your census tracts? Okay. So then, are you at DP03? Okay. So do you see how, first of all, if you scroll down, it goes through all the household income. See, that's what I'm saying also, like remember we talked about earlier how it's important to know the difference between earnings, between household, between uh, family. It all is there at that table. That's what I love about it. So if I'm doing, you know, I have very limited time and I need to know family income and I'm looking at specific neighborhoods, this might be the way to go. And you don't have to go further than this. But also what I like about this is it has percentages. So if you scroll down, you see household, you see family, and you see there's also per capita, if they ever ask you that. So every now and then you are asked per capita income. So it's all there in this profile, so I like that a lot. And then in, um, say if I was examining these neighborhoods, I would also look at the DP2 the social characteristics because then it's going to tell me about school enrollment and attainment which I want to know because I'm looking at schools okay at the very end of that is the poverty the percentage of poverty and you can see that Do you see how you could use this it's, it's a summary so it's a lot of data you have to like say oh okay um, but if you take it piece by piece it can really work for you Say for example, like if uh, there was a uh, grad that said, we want to know how many families uh, earn, or we want to just work with families that are, this program is only for families with incomes of, uh, family income of 35,000 below. This table would allow you to do that, correct? Okay, I see nods, which I like. My screen, I don't like. Oh, I lost all that geography. You know, this is one of those like <gasps> moments. Okay, so then the next table is your subject table. And I want you to see the difference. The poverty subject table is way more uh, complex. I'm just going to do a geography of uh, San Antonio to follow along with you. But look at, do you see that you do the result two on top of your table? That's how you get to your other table. Yeah. Up here? Mm hmm So we result one of two. You should get to subject table 1701. You guys see that? You went back to search? Okay. Do you see that? Result two of these. So you see the subject table? Yeah. So then you view it. Okay. So now... What's nice is, is this lab is small, so I can walk around and see what people are doing. I got it. I was just seeing the media. Oh, okay. That's no problem. Okay. So then, what it, so do you see in the subject table in poverty, it first starts off with age. So again, it's relating, and I'll go ahead and pull one up. But it's relating everything, age, gender, like male, female. And answer this question for me. If does make a, being a male or a female affect my poverty status in the state of Texas in these census tracts or in the city of San Antonio just by being male or female? First, tell me about Texas. Does it make a difference if I'm a male or female in the state of Texas? Will that affect my poverty status? Am I more likely to be Living in poverty status if I'm male or female? What's the answer? Female. Female. 
Does everybody agree with Carol? Okay, Stephanie agrees with you. <laughs> or maybe she's just saying yes. Okay, do you guys see that? How to interpret that? How about uh, in the city of San Antonio? So in Texas, you're saying yes. But how about in the city of San Antonio? Yes? Okay, that's not good, but you know, what can I say? Um, how about in the census tracts? Male or female? Does that matter? Okay, so, but does it matter if you're male or you're female? Because in some census tracts, male is, uh, can be higher percentage rate. And these particular ones, what are you telling me? Female. female? Okay, so it's consistent. So just difference in gender. Now tell me, one last question I have on the subject table is, if I'm Hispanic or Latino origin in the state of Texas, Am I more likely to be living in poverty status? Yes? yes? Okay. How about in uh, city of San Antonio? Okay, so do you see how that works? So the subject table will relate age, will relate Hispanic or Latino origin, educational attainment back to poverty. But that's what's nice about that subject table. Say, for example, if I'm doing different things on educational attainment maybe, I've worked a lot with community colleges, they always want to see what a population's educational attainment is. So they can just write on your narrower search, you can just write educational attainment. Okay, so that's, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of like, right, if you're writing a grant and you're doing different pieces, you can just use your narrower search that way. Okay, that's a nice uh, tip. One last, because uh, I have five minutes to go for Celia's uh, showtime, <laughs> is um, let's do the final table, which was the basic table. So it should be your third one. I was trying to catch up to you guys. Um, okay, poverty. So it should be the B1701, and it should be the result three, and that is only a, it's a simple table, it's a basic table, that for some reason I can't get here. Um, but does everybody have 1701? No, I could, but I'll follow you. Well, you can't follow me because I'm not there. Let me see if I can do it this way. Who, who didn't get it? Because all you had to do was just um, check it out? No. Okay, I went back and then I ended up cleaning everything, so I don't know how I did that. Oh, you cleared out everything? Okay. Did you get 1701? Okay. Let's see. You cleared up? Yeah, I didn't need to. Oh, no. You did what I did. You weren't supposed to follow me. <laughs> I didn't okay. need to. Well, we're finishing up. So you want to go just sit by Carol? I don't think she bites. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I won't get there. It, it, it's, it's being misplaced. So then 1701, you should be on the basic. Okay, so let's go uh, result three of three. So click on result three of three. And are you there? Okay. So this is a real simple basic table or in your key data products, that's your detail table. I know it should be D, but then we have the DP. So the basic table are really those sometimes where you'll probably work the most. Okay. So remember we had a profile, we had a subject table that organized things under the subject. The good things about those two tables, the profile and the subject is they have the percentages. And I love that. However, the basic table does not. So you're gonna have to download it to an Excel spreadsheet, okay? So what you look at here at B17001, I'm only looking at 
uh, poverty as related to age and as related to um, male female and whenever you look at this particular table be careful when you're downloading because the top part of the table is below poverty level and the bottom is above so if you're going crazy you've got a deadline and then you accidentally like download the bottom you're not gonna have good figures okay because if people are asking you uh, who, what percentage of the population lives in poverty level correct so then let me also take you through how do you modify your data okay how do you play with your data so to speak so do you see those uh, modify table bookmark print download create a map okay all of those are in blue which means you can use them when they're blue so click on modify table what is your name? just like Jacqueline she's my banner right now sort of <laughs> okay so modify table do you see how it changes the table so what's nice about that is if you're just interested in, say, if we were working at the East Side uh, Talent, and I was just really interested in only a certain age group, say 5 to 12, then I could modify it. And you could modify it before you download. Okay, so you could take that. If you say, no, Pauline, I just like to download my table, and then I do it. Okay, well, all right. But if you wanted to do it otherwise, you, would, uh, you could do that through modify table. And sometimes by modifying the table, you look at it to see if it will help you, if that's the data you want. So that's where it would be good as far as before you download it, before you commit to it, look at it and say, nah, I'm gonna move on to another one. The other thing is bookmark. If you go to a meeting or whatever and you, you've done all this work, before you <laughs> cleared it out, you see, you've done all this work <laughs> and then you wanna bookmark it, you do not wanna lose it like we did, you and I. Uh, bookmark it okay if you want to print you can uh, print it to a PDF and send it to someone say look I know all this information I found this out you of course will do a nice summary because you're a great grant writer and say this is a table that I have and this is what it shows and you'll be a star okay and then uh, so you can download it okay click on download let's talk a little bit about that I'm good okay all right so do you see download so it says uh, data annotation in a single file you can do it in the PDF uh, Excel and Excel you can do whenever you do Excel um, I don't know if do any of you work in CSV format you do okay so you, so you can do this in CSV and then to Excel if you want to do multiple things that's the best way to that uh, it says I don't work in CSV as much, but other people have done it, have downloaded that way. And you, I think, are going to be downloading a lot of different tables. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, so then, just but keep in mind when you're downloading, a little trick or tip is you know how deadlines are, and you can get crazy downloading data. Is make sure you keep the name of your table. Okay. Make sure you don't like start deleting stuff or then, oh, where did I go? Or what did, you know, because then if something looks funky, then you can't go back to your original data. So make sure you have that table. Uh, and then make sure that you keep the table that you are referencing and keep your citation. Okay, so did you use five year, or three year, or whatever? And it'll always be at the bottom. So those are real important download. Uh, and download at will, you can do whatever. But just make sure you can get back to where you were before, just in case you need to look at a number again. You know, because in those little blurry deadline times, sometimes uh, you just need to make sure that where you had to go back, you know where to go, go back and where you got your data. Okay? Now, one last thing about margin of error as you're looking at a number. Okay? So you can close out of that. Oh, I know. One, one other thing is... Whenever, and if you go back to high table, right here, it'll, it'll reset it. And don't be afraid to do that modified table. You're not going to modify the U.S. Census Bureau tables. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I changed the whole data set for the city of San Antonio. We'll never be able to same. Okay. Um, that won't happen. Uh, you're powerful, I know, but not that powerful. Do you see where it says create a map? Do I have a few more minutes, Sydney? Okay, good. So I just want to show them this.
create a map, like you saw the limitations on the other tables, there's not percentages. You're going to have to download your basic tables and do the percentages yourself through the formulas of Excel, right? Create a map is another graphic that I think you'll be able to use. So put attention. So create a map is um, just click on create a map and it'll, it'll turn all the, and you couldn't do this before with our data, but you can now. And create a map uh, works on some tables like your basic tables um, and not in the others. But on your basic tables, you can create a map. And if it's in blue, you can do it. If it's in blue. Okay? So create a map and then click on, and I can go around to make sure that you do this since I don't have a screen. Um, it's blue and then it says, it turns it blue, so then in the second, like the census track 1306, click on that number 4788. Oh, not 4788, excuse me, on 2526, which is your first income in the past 12 months. Do you see that? I can go around. Do you see that? Okay. And then I'll say show map. So go ahead and click on showing map. So this, and you'll see, but you can also, for those of you who work in a whole area like uh, Bear County, you can also do all census tracts within Bear County, and then you can look at that, okay? But it's a whole lot bigger. So it's taking its time. Let me go over to Carol. Oh, Has anybody gotten the map yet? Yeah, you have. Did you do it? Okay, you have to get out of high uh, table tools. Okay, so do you see what happened? Okay, I'll go, I'll go. Did you get a map yet? Okay, so, so you see the difference? What are you looking at? It's based on the table you just looked at. Yeah, create a map. Yeah, you, what was hanging you up is you were in high table tools. So you have to get on high table tools. And then you turn it blue, and then do you see that number? Uh, not text is right there. Yeah, two five two eight. That's good. And then say show map. So this is just an example, but if you wanted just to do a certain age group and look at poverty level, you would just click on that that row of the table. Okay. So if you wanted to drill down, you can also play with this map. If you don't want army green in your map, you can do red, which is our neutral and uh, or um, whatever color you want. Sometimes publications, PowerPoints, or whatever, if you want to include this in there, uh, will dictate what colors you use. Because I know I've had professors saying, well, I'm printing a book, and so I need it only in grayscale. Okay, boring, but <laughs> you have to do it. Okay, so it lets you, so do you, do you see what's happening here? You can really customize and really make a nice presentation. You know what, some grant uh, writers have told me, good data about bad things, okay? But you can tell your story this way. And I think it, you know, knowing how to, you know, initiate the power of this can really help in anything you're trying to write about. So like if you're saying you're doing a different communities, if you want to show different parts of the, um, in this particular case, they're working on a neighborhood initiative, so they have a lot of neighborhoods together, right? But say if you were looking at two different parts of San Antonio, you would see you know, differences there. If you want to uh, illustrate that, you could do this by creating a map. Okay, do you guys like this? Okay, so let's do a, um, a summary or kind of a, a look over. And, um, and then I would want a little bit of your comments and then I'm gonna turn it over to Celia. And she's like, boy, no she's not, she's too nice. <laughs> she's like relaxed, like, hey, go ahead. <laughs> I know what I'm going to do. And so, um, so first of all, so we looked at 2010, now we moved over to American Community Survey. So it has period estimates, which are 12 months, 36, 60 months, based on population thresholds. There's different products that you can pull from. What we looked at today was those uh, demographic profiles. Don't forget about those, because those are good. Those are good time savers. Your narrative profile, I just adore because you can cut and paste. And then uh, the third one that we looked at was that basic table. 
which is really just when you're looking at different characteristics, I say, I want to look, I'm only interested in female householders. So it, uh, the basic tables allows you to zero in on that, okay? So, um, and then just don't forget about um, when you download to make sure you do your citation, go back to your table. One other little point that I wanted to make was on MOE. Okay. Let me just grab this. Okay. Okay. So MOE, margin of error. We talked about that earlier. And go back to a table. And let's look at an estimate number. Go back to table because you're now at a map, which you're excited about, I'm hoping. So it doesn't matter what table you're on, just as long as it has a number. But now I can't even find this. Okay. Shush. Isn't that terrible? Uh, let's go to DPO. Anyone, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to go to any table just to illustrate. And then view. Okay. Does it? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter. So see where I have estimate and estimate margin of error. Okay, so remember we talked about reliability and this is a sample. So if this number, this estimate was 100 and my margin of error was 10, okay? So we published a 90% margin of error. Nine times out of 10, that number will appear in the population. So if that number is 100 plus 10 minus 10. So my confidence interval that that number will appear in the general population is 90 and 110, okay? Plus or minus. We're hearing a lot about plus or minus of the political polls, right? Um, so we want to be confident that number is going to appear in our general population. But what happens if this number becomes 20? Where's my confidence interval? 80 and 120, right? So then it's expanding my uh, confidence interval that that number, so is it less likely to appear in the general population if it's wider? I, I have a bigger chance that it may not, okay? So rule of thumb is that if your estimate margin of error is above, above 10%, of your estimate number, you may want to question the reliability. Okay, so that's just a rule of thumb to think about reliability. If it's above 10%, so say for example, um, I remember in a class in Arizona, this guy said, oh my God, in this community, all these grandparents are taking care of children. When she looked at her margin of error, it was way high. So I said, you might want to think about that and think about saying that statement. So that's the way it would impact you and your results, okay? Because I want you to feel very secure about whatever you write or, or cite. 